Once upon a time there was a boy, and his name was Billy. And Billy was a very lucky boy. He lived in an enormous house, almost a mansion. It had big white walls around the outside with horses' heads and big cartwheels in the walls. The driveway was crunchy gravel and there were pillars by the door. There were many bedrooms in the house. But the trouble was, Billy was also a very lonely boy because to be able to have a house like that, Mum and Dad had to work very, very hard and they had to work all the hours of the day. So every day Billy would get up and he knew he would be in an empty house because mum and dad were, had already gone. He would get washed, run down the stairs, put himself some toast on and then when he'd eaten his toast he'd run out of the door and down to school. He was always the first to arrive at school, always hanging out outside the gates until the cleaners came and they all knew his name and they'd let him into the playground and then he'd see the teachers coming and they'd set him little jobs to do. But then his friends would come and the day would really begin. Billy loved school, he loved playing with his friends, he loved learning. And at the end of school he went to play centre with all the other children and he was always the last to leave play centre. The workers would say, Billy! It's half past six, off you go, on your way. And Billy would then run home, past the hedges, all the way to his house. He had his own front door key, and he opened the door, ran in, two more toast, then upstairs to play on his PlayStation. And it was many hours later that Mum and Dad came home. He would hear the slam of the door. And Dad would shout out, Billy, Billy, are you there? Yes, Dad, I'm here, I'm here, I'm in, I'm okay. And that would be it. That may be the last words he ever heard from Mum and Dad all week until the weekend. But Sunday was different. Sunday, Mum said, was a sacred day. Sunday was a family day. And he loved sitting at the dinner table for the Sunday lunch. He loved talking to Mum and Dad and finding out how their weeks went and telling them how he was doing at school but the best thing of all he just loved watching them talk to each other well one day they were sitting down tucking in when the phone rang ring 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 oh uh darling it's your mobile it's not my mobile it's the house phone oh my goodness gracious where is that oh here it is yes oh hello this is here i beg pardon Oh, what? Yes, but that's not our response. Look, I cannot... Re no, I'm not being run reasonable. Look, oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll be there in an hour. And Mum said, who was that, darling? Well, that, darling, was the hospital. It's my father. Your grandfather, Billy. Well, the flat he lives in is far too cold. The window's broken and the radiator doesn't work. They found him at the bottom of the stairs. He's had a bit of a fall. He's in hospital now. And they want us to put him in a home for someone to look after him. And Mum said, but darling, we can't afford that. We have three foreign holidays a year. We, we just cannot afford it. I know, darling, I know. But there's only one thing left for us to do. He has to come and live with us. Oh no, said Mum. Oh no, said Dad. Yes, said Billy, because Billy loved his granddad. Because his granddad was full of stories, full of jokes, full of weird songs, and he always had time for Billy. So Billy couldn't wait for Granddad to come. He went into the front room in the bay window and he looked out through the net curtains. He was sitting on thorns waiting for his granddad, and then he saw it. The big car pulled up, crunching on the gravel. The passenger door opened, and it was him, Grandad, jumping down and carrying his little brown suitcase. Well, Billy ran to the door. Billy opened the door. Grandad! 
Hello, Billy boy. It's good to see you. Oh, you come on, Billy. You come on. Hey, Grandad, come in. I've got something brilliant to show you. It's it's dinosaurs. I've got a really good. Oh, I know a lot about dinosaurs, Billy. I know a lot about them. And Billy and Grandad went into the front room. And when they were in here, there, all Mum and Dad heard was laughing. Well, two hours later, it was time for tea. And for tea, they had soup. And they all sat around and Grandad got his big bowl of soup. Grandad loved soup, but Grandad had no teeth. And sometimes it's hard not to make a noise when you eat. And Grandad got his first spoon. Well, Billy fell about laughing at Grandad's noise. <laughs> it's good soup, Billy boy, it's great, it's great, Grandad, it's great. But Mum wasn't laughing, and Dad wasn't laughing. And afterwards, when they were filling up the dishwasher, Mum said to Dad, Look, Roger, we can't have him making that noise at the dinner table, it's disgusting. I know, darling, I know, I know. I'm ashamed he's my father. Well, darling, look, I hope you don't mind, but I've got an idea. Why doesn't he take his food in the front room? That's a good idea. Well, Billy, he ran straight to Grandad and said, Grandad, Grandad, is it all right if, if you eat in the front room? I don't know. That's all right, Billy boy, don't you worry about it. Don't worry about it, boy. I, I'm used to eating alone. I'm used to it. Well, that evening, uh, Mum said, um, um, yes, um, well, you can't sleep in the spare room because Roger needs that spare room for his weight room. And I need the other spare room for my, my clothes. And Roger needs the other one for his office. So you're going to have to sleep under the stairs. Oh, I, uh, I don't mind. I like spiders. <laughs> so Grandad slept under the stairs on an old camp bed. And Billy said, oh, is that all right, Grandad? Yeah, don't worry, Billy. Boy, be like, be like during the war. <laughs> well... The next day, Grandad did take his food in the front room. But the front room's got a sofa, and the front room's got a coffee table, and you have to lean over, and Grandad, well, he was also very shaky in his hand, and they gave him rice, and he got a fork, and he lifted up the rice, and, and he spilt some on the carpet. And Mum came in and saw it, and Mum said, Oh, my God, you're a mucky, mucky, after a little child. Well, from now, you are not eating your food in the front room. You are going to eat your food in the garden. And Billy lo looked at Grandad and said, Grandad, Grandad, is that all right? Oh, don't you worry, Billy boy. Don't worry. Be like having a picnic out there. Uh, sitting at the table, eat my grub. Oh, no, said Mum, you're not going to eat your food off the table. You will eat your food off the ground. And that afternoon, Billy went up to the patio doors and he looked out and he saw Grandad and he said, and Grandad said, No, yeah, I'm all right, Billy boy. Don't worry about me. Oh, it was just a bit nippy, that's all. <laughs> well, that night, Billy couldn't sleep. He was very worried about poor Grandad. But also, Mum and Dad were talking next door, and they were talking loudly, and they kept on talking. And you should never do this. But Billy got up out of bed and listened at their door, and he heard what they were saying. And Mum was saying, Oh, Roger, I just can't bear it anymore. We work so hard. I come home for a bit of peace and quiet to look out the world, and there he is. I know, darling, I know. I feel the same way. But I've got an idea what we'll do is, you know, the laundry basket. We'll put him in the laundry basket. We'll put the laundry basket in the back of the four by four. We'll drive up to Epping Forest. We'll leave him by the side of the road. Somebody seeing that basket, they'll pull over. And they'll look what's inside and they'll, well, they'll look after him. Oh, Roger, thank you. Billy heard it. Billy couldn't bear it. 
Billy ran into his mum and dad's room, ran straight in and said, Mum, Dad, don't do it, don't do it. <gasps> Billy, get back to your bed. How dare you listen at our door? Get back to your bed now, you naughty boy. Darling, get your coat. Mum and Dad went downstairs. They opened the cupboard under the stairs. They shone in their torches. The old man looked up. Oh, what, 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 what is it? What is it? What, what, what's going on? Oh, what? Father, get up now. Get up. Get up. Well, what, 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 what's going on? Father, see this laundry basket? Get into the laundry basket. Yeah, well, well, why, but why, boy, why? Father, trust me, I'm your son. So Grandad got into the laundry basket and they closed the lid. And Mum and Dad picked up the basket and they moved through the corridor. Outside, Dad said, open the door of the disco, darling. Lift it up. One, two, three. They lifted up the laundry basket. Quiet now. We don't want the neighbours to know. Suddenly, a window opened behind them. They looked. It was Billy. Billy, leaning out of the window. Mom, Dad, Billy, get back. Get back inside, boy. Get back now. Push it in, darling. Push it in. But Dad, Mom. Oh, Billy, Billy, deal with this. Billy, what is it, Billy? What is it? Dad, please. When you're finished, bring back the laundry basket. The laundry basket? But why, boy? Why? Because, Dad, I'm going to need that basket when you grow old. Dad stopped. And he said, darling, darling, bring out the basket, bring out the basket, bring out the basket. And he opened the lid of the basket. And he saw the old man in there. And he said, Father, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And he picked up his dad. And he hugged his dad. And it was the first time he had hugged his dad for many years. Well, do you know, the next time they had soup, Grandad had soup, because he was there at the dinner table with them. He took his soup spoon, he tried very hard, but he couldn't help it. <coughs> dad looked at him. Dad took his soup spoon and went. <coughs> and then Mum took her soup spoon and went. <coughs> And they all fell about laughing. And when Grandad dropped some food on the floor, Mum and Dad, they didn't mind. And then when Grandad got sick, he got a bit sick. Uh, and then he got a bit sicker and he went to hospital. And then he died. And they all cried. But they weren't tears of sadness. They were tears of joy that they had spent those last days with that wonderful, wonderful man. That is the end of the story.